Hi, and welcome to the Peak Endurance Podcast. Thank you for joining me today, episode 184. I'm honing in on 200 episodes. And speaking of, have you gone over to YouTube to check out the YouTube um, videos of the podcast? I always record them, and there they are over on YouTube. And feel free to subscribe to that. I currently am at 191 subscribers. I would love to get it to 200, ultimately more, but hey. 200 would be nice. Um, so get on over, subscribe, and then you can actually see the videos of all the podcasts um, and see us in all our glory or not. Um, okay, so today on the podcast, I have Andrew Perry from Prepped, and Prepped, P R E P D, is a, um, a hydration system designed for enhanced hydration effectiveness and we go into the podcast about what that actually means about hydration effectiveness i'm not going to explain it now because i want you to hear it straight from andrew um and this is for before during and after exercise and and i really truly believe that hydration is something we do neglect a bit as ultra runners and i got put onto this product um i don't normally you know do podcasts on products as, as a way like of selling a product i get no financial kickbacks from this of course um it's more that i i felt that this product was interesting and um i wanted you to know about it because i do believe a lot of um ultra runners do at some point suffer from the effects of dehydration within their race whether that's from um being unable to eat and digest foods to you know hydration reducing performance as it is want to do um, so I just thought this was really interesting, a different way of looking at hydration, and you will find out more as you listen, because it's not about electrolytes per se, it's about other things, um, very scientific, and, and I hope you enjoy it. Like I said, something a little bit different. Now, very excited, I got a um, review for the podcast. As I said, I love getting reviews, and this is from Alex Ola Bowl. It's one word, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Five stars. Thank you very much. And they say, I'm new to this podcast, but I'm absolutely addicted to listening to Isabel and her guests. The topics covered are, I'm guessing, educational, relevant, and super interesting. I look forward to my daily runs so I can plug in my earphones and get inspired. Thank you so much for that review. Honestly, I just, like I've said, I love getting reviews, you know, like it really, it makes my day. So if you haven't done it already, I, um, I, I ask if you could, you know, it, 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 like I said, it helps the pod, makes me feel good about slogging away at this week after week. Um, speaking of, uh, next week I may not be putting a podcast out. Um, I have surgery for an ongoing condition um, and uh, I'm not really sure how I will go. I will see. Supposedly the um, recovery is not fun, so that is why I am not 100% sure. So, um, I may be taking an early break for Christmas if that is the case. So apologies if there's no podcast next week. I hope there is one. I hope I nail the recovery. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm basing that on hoping that as an ultra runner, I have um, a high pain threshold. So I'm hoping that's what gets me through. All righty. Now, um, if you haven't yet, make sure you register for my goal setting webinar on the um 11th Wednesday the 11th of January 7 p.m Melbourne time but it will be recorded but it's always better to hop onto these things live because then you can ask questions or give feedback or you know it can be more tailored directly to you and your needs obviously I have uh, set things that I'll be talking about that will really um, and it's going to be different to the I did one earlier this year um, it will be different new some old information but new information new workbooks new or all, all that sort of stuff so if you've done it before it will be new um and i just i'm a really big believer in in getting your year set up right starting off on the front foot and um making sure you know exactly what you're doing not just you know sort of flying by the seat of your pants to get through the year and oh, i'll do this race and that race i mean it's still nice to do races for fun but you know you can factor that in with your goal setting and certainly if you have a family and they want to know what you're doing. It's helpful if, if you know, you've got your goals set out um, and they know what's coming up. And like I've said on my posts, goal setting is not just about 
this is the race I'm doing and this is the time I want. There's so much more um, involved in the process goals that help you to get there, that actually provide the motivation to stick at it because you wait until, I mean, the weather's crappy enough as it is, but you wait until June ne- next year when it's dark and it's raining and it's cold and it's um, four in the morning and the last thing you want to do is go out and do a run. These process goals will help you to um slay that you know demotivation dragon whatever you want to call it I don't know and 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 keep going and and I really um think it's important to work on these and and I give you the tips and tricks for developing habits that will help you stay on track and stay motivated um because it can be hard when you're feeling the fatigue of training to to push yourself out the door it can be hard when you're in the middle of a race and you're feeling like this is the hardest thing you've ever done and you want to stop, but you know you've got those goals in your head and the process goals in your head and um, that will keep you going. So I, I really think, you know, that you will get a lot out of this. And so head on over to the shop at peakendurancecoaching.com.au and get onto that. And while you're there, um, register for the Stretching and Mobilization Challenge because that is um, going to be an awesome one um, to live um stretching and mobilization uh, classes per week which i record for you to look at later and that would be another really good one and i have to say i did not used to be really into stretching but as i am getting older and you know everything seems to be you know and not just older just older in running years if you know what i'm saying and um I think the longer you've been running, the more and more important it is to work on mobilizing the body so that you've got full range of motion. Only when you've got full range of motion can you really um full range of motion for running. Um we don't need to be don't need to be gymnasts. Um then you can really get hit your potential. All righty. So um another thing, don't forget peak chocolate. I'm loving this one, the energy with less than 0.1 grams of sugar, which means basically none. 20. I can't even read that because without my glasses, that's terrible. 25% protein and a caffeine shot. And oh my God, I love caffeine. So that's great. I I've I've had it during runs and um sugar can sometimes set me off. And because it's not sugary. It doesn't, and it's awesome. gives you that little bit of protein which you need on these long runs as well. All righty, and don't forget to support them. Going to peakchocolate.com.au and use the code ISABELROSS, all caps, at checkout to get a 15% discount. And, of course, health and high performance in Montalbert are just fantastic for sorting out all your niggles and and keeping you on track for running um, injury free and you know working on your mobilization and that sort of stuff and and you know Luke is just awesome as you will have heard from the podcast that he has done with me before and which we need to do again but you know how it is when life gets busy trying to organize everything um, anyway I really hope you enjoyed this podcast with Andrew I found it super interesting and I think it's a really interesting product and quite frankly quite delicious um, so give it a try I will put the links to the website and there is a um, a little educational video on the product on their website too and I'll provide a link to that. So enough, enough of my waffle. I know you want to hear what um, it's all about. So I will let you get to that now. Enjoy the podcast and hopefully see you next week. But if not, have an awesome Christmas, fabulous New Year's and all that sort of stuff and I will see you in 2023. Bye. Hi, Andrew, and welcome to the Peak Endurance Podcast. Hi, Israel. Lovely to be here. Thanks for having me. Not a problem, though. No. Just um, can you uh, introduce us? I've already given an introduction, but just tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, how you are in, in have been involved in running and how you got involved with Prepped as well, perhaps. Yeah, for sure. So, Isabel, lucky enough to get involved with Prepped uh, back in 2017 when I was training for the New York Marathon. Um, so they were looking for some guinea pigs, I guess, uh, to trial this new Fandangle product that sits behind me. And uh, it was still very much in the, I guess, the R&D stage around how to use it. So I was training for that. Uh, my wife was working alongside um, the guys that were inventing it or trying to spin out the science. And so, yeah, I, I used it on a couple of long, long runs before I went to New York. And um, when I finished New York Marathon, uh, about five days later, I was back in LA and I was running again. I've never been able to do that after a marathon. Um, I'd 
sort of limped to the start of the New York Marathon because uh, I just had an interrupted training program, young kids, working full-time, mm. all those sorts of things. So it was probably, uh, well, certainly was the li- most limited amount of training I'd done before a marathon uh, and still ran a pretty good time. So I still ran a 3.30, which I was pretty happy with. Um, had a great time in the streets of New York, but it was, yeah, as I said, five days later when I was running along Venice Beach thinking, this is amazing. The only thing that's changed is I haven't trained as much and I feel better than I ever have before. Yeah. And the only thing that I'd added to my training was um, was the use of prep hydration. So that's how I got involved with prep hydration. Um, in terms of running, I've run you know, half a dozen different marathons, Um around Australia and obviously, as I said, New York, um, the best marathon I've run in Australia was the Great Ocean Road, which was oh, really, that's a great one. Yeah. really, really enjoyable. I've run a couple of Adelaide marathons and then um, a couple of mates and I just decided one weekend we'll just run a marathon for the sake of it. So we've done that a couple of times as well. Um, so I've always had this interest in, I guess, endurance sport, um, which I guess led me to uh, only five, six weeks ago, I went and took part in UTA 100. Um, over in the Blue Mountains, which was amazing. So, um, yeah, I guess that's a bit of an overview of me in terms of how I've been involved. So was that your biggest run other than a marathon? Oh, most certainly, yeah. I'd never run, I mean, well, the Great Ocean Road being about that yeah. 40 and a bit, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'd never never been anywhere near that ultra space um, before. And, uh, yeah, I mate just said. Uh, so do you think you've made the tr- transition over to the dark side now? Oh, it's not the dark side. It's a, it's addictive, right? Yes, like you, that's what I mean. <laughs> you finish one and you, you think, wow, okay, that was very, very enjoyable. And it, I speak to people since I got back and I say, you know, but like, how, did you stop? Did you rest? And you obviously go through your know, feed station strategies and all those sorts of things that you did on the day for UTA. But the thing that always surprises me is just how quickly. I mean, we did it in 50, just under 15 and a half hours. And so it just how quickly that 15 and a half hours disappeared. Um, yeah. It was born in a heartbeat and, you know, now you're just trying to remember all the things you did on the day, which is which is great fun. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's definitely um, UTA was my first 100 as well, so I get the addictive nature of it. All right, so now for people who haven't heard of Prepped, and to be honest, I hadn't, um, one of my coaching clients um, showed me some of the drinks that he had and he shared them with me and I gave them a crack and um, I felt the benefits of them. And that's why I thought, well, we'll get you on the podcast and you can talk to um, the ultra athletes that we have listening um, and maybe they will benefit from, from this product. So if you want to tell us what is prepped all about. Uh, so prepped it fundamentally started with some science that the world health organization. So if we go back to the late nineties, the World Health Organization had an issue with kids in India and Bangladesh that were perishing and dying uh, for drinking dirty river water. So they were catching cholera and rotavirus. So these kids were losing up to 10 litres of fluid a day. Wow. Um, a couple of the, um, the founders of our science from um, Flinders University and Yale University were at a conference that the World Health Organization were presenting on this in Europe at the time. They got together afterwards, realised they knew two other colleagues that could help them solve this problem. They went back and presented, a, I guess, a protocol to the World Health Organisation and said, in your oral rehydration solution you're using for the, for the children, if you add a certain strand of resistant starch, so ours is a modified corn starch which, which sits in it, the body will allow, will allow the body to absorb fluids more efficiently. So the Gates Foundation funded this trial. Can I just ask a question? What does it mean, um, absorb fluids more efficiently? What does that mean? Yeah, so with, I guess, a vast majority of our, when, when we drink water or whatever we consume, a vast majority of that fluid uptake to get back into our bloodstream that allows our blood to stay thin and be pumped out of our body and keep our blood hydrated happens in the small intestine. The resistant starch or the modified corn starch we use in our product, that resistant starch, allows so it's resistant to digestion in the stomach yeah travels through the small intestine so promotes a good amount of absorption in the small intestine but then lands in the large intestine and so for the average person there's about five liters of fluid that sits in the large intestine that we can draw back into the bloodstream as well but what we need is that resistant starts to hit some very cool chemical reactions happen some short chain fatty acids are produced and then 
there's a signal to the brain to say, hey, there's fluid here available for me. And so then it draws it back into the bloodstream. So that's what happened with the trial with the World Health Organization and the children. And so, yeah, they saw fluid absorption um, increase by about 40%. So these kids were, you know, not losing 10 litres of fluid, they were losing about six or a bit over then. Um, so that was in the late 90s, early 2000s. Fast forward to about 2012, uh, there was a, at Flinders Uni, there was a commercialisation arm of Flinders University here in South Australia, and their job was fundamentally to find cool science that they could commercialise. They found this science, they researched how does dehydration affect athletes, and they took the dehydration data to one of the scientists, Professor Graham Young, and said to Graham, hey, Here's all the literature that supports decreasing performance as athletes dehydrate. Would this science you use with the World Health Organization and the kids in India and Bangladesh, would that translate? And he said, science, of course it will. So they went and did a clinical study with the Adelaide Crows Football Club, showed players reduced fluid loss by up to 85%. Wow. Uh, absorbed fluids clinically 39% more efficiently and then rehydrated so they got to the start line or got to practice in a better hydrated state so it doesn't sound like a lot but we're talking players are about 300 grams heavier at the start of training they lost 27 percent less fluid during training and they regained fluid in the two hours post training 29 percent faster so effectively at the end of post two hours of training the players using our product were back to their playing weight at the start of training where the guys that didn't use the product were still 1.2 kilos down wow. on what they'd started at. And that was over a two-hour training session. Yeah. Um, so and, if you extrapolate that out even further, that would be a big difference. Absolutely. So so that's where, and I guess we talk about that in a training setting, and, and I think that's where I've seen the biggest difference personally myself in my training and my running is the ability to back up from session to session to session. So then when you get to a race or or you, you've got, we talk about here at the office all the time, dehydration is the biggest impact on people not achieving their bucket list goal. Mm. So they're going out and they're doing a 240k bike ride at three peaks or they're, they're doing a 100k run or whatever it may be. Dehydration is the one that kicks in first and stops, shuts everything else down effectively and so therefore they can't finish. So to have spent 12 And if you think about, um, say, an ultra running, sorry, um, many times people DNF because of gastric issues. Um, and I'm assuming that with this product, um, because digestion of foods requires, you know, being hydrated, that it would help with that sort of thing as well. Yeah, 100%. So I guess everything that happens in our gut and our stomach is related to how much we need fluid in there to help. Yeah. Um, absorb the fluid and, and convert the glucose and absorb those back in our bloodstream. And everything happens, it's all related to fluid. Uh, so when we when we dehydrate and we don't have any fluid, well, then we can't process the food in our gut or it becomes harder. And so that's when people start to vomit and all those sorts of things. Now, you know, like we'll go to, I, I'm certainly not a dietitian, so I don't want to step into that space of being a dietitian. But physiologically, when we start to exercise, first thing that happens is a heart rate goes up. When a heart rate goes up, our sweat rate goes up. And our sweat, as we sweat, we start, that's our body's natural cooling system. So we start to lose fluids. So we need to replace those fluids. It's it's a pretty simple cycle. But it's very hard to replace as much fluid as you lose over the course of a, a marathon, let alone an ultra marathon. So the ability to be able to tap into, as I said earlier, an additional five litres of fluid that just sits there, that if we don't use it, we just excrete it, makes a, it's a game changer. It makes a massive difference to people's ability to train in the first place and recover and do well, but then on, on game day, match day, ultra marathon day, whatever it might be, actually run and enjoy what they do as opposed to have the cognitive challenges and physical challenges, uh, gut challenges that most people would experience. No, pardon me. I have these two. Um, this one, say, for instance, this um, liquid um, yep. that says prime pre-workout. Yep, that's the, the red one. Um, so you would drink that, as I recall, like 10 to 18 hours before. And so that's, that's so the, hence it's called a prime. It's priming your gut for <laughs> optimal absorption of fluids that you consume in training or, or competition. Uh, so that's where the resistant starch gets down into your, into your gut. 
allows the short chain fatty acids to be produced, and then those short chain. And that fat- ten to eighteen hours is that allowing? Is that giving the the resistant starch time to get down into the yeah? So then uh, those short chain fatty acids, they're the ones that help promote fluid absorption in the gut. Um, so with them sitting there, so if we're thinking we, we're preparing to go and run an ultra marathon, and a couple of days beforehand, people will start to consume these. Um, and so that what that does is it just means they're better hydrated when they hit the start line. And so that that 10 to 18 hours beforehand, earlier the better. So we, if we say 18 hours, for, particularly for people that are using it for the first time, because it's high in fibre. So depending on how much fibre you have in your diet or how much of a healthy microbiome you've got. So what, what's your gut health like? If you've got a really, really good balance of gut health and you've got plenty of good bacteria running around in your gut, that's awesome. Um, but not a lot of people do have that. So you will see on the bottle there as well um, that it's it's a prebiotic. So it's feeding yeah. good food to the good bacteria in your gut. So yes, you need good bacteria in your gut to start with, but you might have a, a probiotic your cults or your kombuchas and those sorts of things, and they're fantastic. And you still certainly need to put those good bacteria in your gut. But if you put them in and there's no good food for those bacteria to eat, well, then they, they just get eaten by the bad bacteria. Yeah. It's The probiotics and the prebiotics working together are really important, and, and that's where this one comes in. So having it regularly in your training program not only helps with your hydration, it helps with your gut health as well. Yeah. So if I drink this um, before, you know, a, a long training run or an ultra event, um, I mean, I, I'm guessing I know what your answer is, but does that mean I don't have to drink as much fluid during the race? Oh, no. It's bookends. <laughs> so what people yeah, hundred, but what people do say is they'll say, oh, I felt like I didn't need to drink as much, mm-hmm. which is 100% right because they're, they're absorbing fluids 39 to 40% more efficiently. Right? So, you know, you're – Two five hundred mil, so you've effectively got a liter here that you're carrying with you. Your body's really thinking that you're carrying one point four liters. So each one of those little, each one of those little five hundred mils really turns into like a seven hundred mil flask as opposed to the five hundred. So if you think about it that way, that's how your body's absorbing, consuming, and then reusing that those fluids that you consume. So that's, I guess, a little secret that we we tell people. So yes. That one most certainly beforehand is is a game changer because it allows your body to absorb those fluids more efficiently. It is a slow release carbohydrate, so again, it's a great fuel source. Mm. Um, in terms of you know, you're talking about people having GI issues and bits and pieces. A lot of the gels and the like that people consume are high in sugar, so therefore they just get these speed um, spikes and drops in in sugar insulin levels and the like. So. Um, that's fatiguing after a long period of time and your gut can't absorb a lot of those. So, yeah, I mean, obviously having having a good slow-release carbohydrate is important as well. So what about, say, for instance, you know, I did Costa Cozzi and that took me, you know, 38 hours. Um, oh, what happens awesome. there? Awesome. <laughs> but, you know, many ultras go for, you know, a, can you consume these during a run? So in... Uh, during UTA, so this is our recover. Whoops, this is our recover product. I've got that. Um, yep. so this, this has half. The recover has half the amount of the resistant starch in it that the the primer. Uh, okay. And it's got electrolytes in it and, and your salts and, and all the things that you need from a recovery product. I use those uh, at the fifty eight k aid station, the seventy eight k aid station, and the eighty seven k aid station. Wow. Um, just as a as a. I guess a product to consume to help keep my hydration. It was a snack. It did all the things I needed it to do during that event um, and pulled up amazingly well. So, um, and it's not just me that uses them. There's other people out there, as you said, your client. Um, We've got Joe Corsione, who is an ultra marathon runner over in the US that has cottoned on our products and he's using them. Um, we've had a number of people. We're lucky enough to have um, someone that's one of our customers run Western States uh, this year, sorry, and he did the same thing. Took them, put them in um, his his drop bags for the feed stations or aid stations, and consume them there. And then, uh, yes, other another customer that we have does a lot of those backyard ultras. Yeah, um, so we'll we'll constantly, you know, about every four to depending on how fast you're running and those sorts of things, but about every four to six hours is a, is a really good time to yeah, just have a recover um, yeah. as a part of your during 
race hydration and nutrition strategy. So, um, so, but not it was originally designed, I'm guessing, for post um, exercise. Because when when we initially pitched to the market, we we had pitched in the endurance space, but that endurance space was more the triathlon space, half Ironman, full Ironman, and even some of the guys in a full Ironman might crack one of these open before they head off for their marathon um, when they've racked their bike. But fundamentally, yeah, it wasn't until we really started. Um, Chris Murphy's the guy's name that does these backyard ultras, and Chris contacted us and said, you know, do you think I could use this during an event? So we, we contacted dietitians that helped us develop the product and said, look, here's the, you know, what do you think? And I said, absolutely. Again, pretty similar to the original science. It's a slow release carbohydrate. It's, it's got salts and everything you need from a recovery product. And so whilst we're not recovering because we're finished, we're still trying to recover and continue. Um, so that's absolutely, it'll, it'll be a great product for someone to consume during. Um, and so that's what we do. And so can I ask why a, um, a product that's designed for recovery would still have the resistant starch? Why do you need to still slow that down? That's a great question. Uh, so what we wanted to do, and if we go back to the study that we spoke about with the Adelaide Cross Footy Club, where the players absorbed fluids about 29% faster than those that didn't use the product post-training, is we want to want to make sure that people rehydrate as fast as they can. Yeah. So the faster you rehydrate, the quicker you get back to normal. You can move on with day-to-day life. You can move on with whatever it is that you need to do, training loads and those sorts of things. And I, I, I guess the best way to describe that for someone if they've experienced, and everyone, no doubt, on this podcast would have hit the wall at some point or is just absolutely fatigued. And so if you think about that is when you get to that point you're trying to get water out of a well, but the well's dry. There's nothing there. So it's really hard work. You're grinding, you're pushing. You know, some people will just collapse and, and need to give up because they can't continue on and, and DNF. Having half the reserve of the resistant starch in that recovery product just means you rehydrate faster. So you're not dipping as low into that dehydration well. And so therefore you recover faster. And it's not as hard work to get out of the well, I guess, if you think of it like that. So that's yeah, that's the the science behind the bookends, so to speak. If we're running a half marathon or, or a marathon, you are obviously yeah. not going to consume this product. But in these ultras, it certainly just allows you to continue to absorb fluids more efficiently um, because you've got good top up of resistant starch in, in your gut. Yeah, and especially um coming into one day summer. Um, I mean, I know it's technically summer, but it's just been hailing here, so um. You know, I think it's really important that we focus on on hydration because that is often um, like when you're out in the bush and it's hot and and that really needs to be something that that is focused on. Um, what about this product, which is a powdered version? Um, now that one says six to ten hours, as I recall. I looked at yeah, the website. And so the reason for that is this is just, I guess, as we grow, look, like, like we haven't been around. I said that these were in infancy in 2017. But we didn't hit the market. By the time we finished all our R&D and hit the market, it wasn't until the end of 2018. Um, so those tubs and bits and pieces of labels for economy of scale and the like, we we pr- produced a big, um, I guess, mass production. Load. So that's where I guess the most up-to-date information, anything you'd ever want would be on our website. We certainly learned through, we did a, we did a study with some cyclists um, and we certainly learned, that's where we learned that the resistant starch, if you don't have a lot of good bacteria in your gut or, or you haven't got a lot of fibre in your diet, that the ability to absorb fluids is slowed because um, the gut health isn't as, as well. So that's why we decided to push that that window, that consumption window out to up to 18 hours. So it gives it plenty of time okay. to get in. So certainly 10 to 18 hours is, is what we advocate for the prime products, whether if they're in the the powder version that you've got there or whether they're in the red version, it's certainly the best way to go about it. But the powder version is simply just a, I guess, you buy it in bulk so it becomes a little bit more economical from a use perspective. And certainly um, for um, ultra runners, that would be something they could put in a little Ziploc bag, which might be easier for transportation. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You certainly can um, put that in a Ziploc and take it off to the events. Uh, they do come in... I didn't send you any sachets, but we do have sachets as well. Oh, so they come yeah. to yeah. you'll serve sachets uh, in Recover and also the Prime product. So, so that yep. certainly, yeah, ticks that off. But 
yeah, the question around, I guess, the, the changes in the in the variant, the only change between the two products, between the ready to the ready to drink range and all the powder is in the recover product or in our recover. The the sports dietitians now are pretty well just looking at that um, as a one-stop shop because it's got a really good serve of protein in it. Um, for you now that's that's okay if people are plant that aren't plant-based. It's um we work we'll work on a plant-based product for them. But if you're milk-based at the moment, it's it's certainly got a good serve of protein in it. It's got the hydration advantage from the resistant starch in it as well. And then it's fortified with leucine as well. So leucine's a BCCA that helps with muscle recovery. So from that perspective, it ticks those three boxes. And then probiotic, uh, sorry, prebiotic. So feeding more good food to the good bacteria in your gut. So yeah, the sports dietitians at AFL teams, Cricket Australia, and those sorts of places that from an elite athlete perspective, they're using the product. They're, they're really seeing that as a, a, I guess, as a number one, well, not a number one, I shouldn't say that, a, as a one-stop shop for, you know, athletes to use straight after exercise. Um, but this one does just as good a job. It just doesn't yeah. have the protein or the leucine in it. That's the only difference. But from a hydration perspective, it does all of the other things. Well, I have to admit, um, during when I'm doing a long ultra, I like to have some protein at some point during it because you're out there long enough, you, there will be some muscle breakdown. So I guess that would be fine to have during as well. Yeah, absolutely. It, um, and look, you can mix that. To, I mean, whilst it's a milk-based product um, with skim milk powder in it, it still mixes up perfectly well yeah. just straight with water. Um, so, yeah, it, it does a trick and it's better. Yeah. I mean, I have to keep my kids away from this a fair bit because they love it. <laughs> uh, they, but I must admit, they do they do consume it as if it was like Milo. Um, yeah. But I prefer them to be consuming this because it's really low in sugar and healthy for them. Um, yeah. and it's not bashing Milo or anything like that, but it certainly is a healthier option. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, and, and that's, um, you know, something good for athletes too because, um, like you said, with in regards to the insulin spikes and and drops, you know, with, with sugar, we can we can get that. Um, so let's just say I've got a, an ultra coming up, you know, um, in a week. What what would I be doing to prepare using prep then? Yeah, so let, if you're running in a week's time, um, we'd certainly recommend uh, grabbing. Uh, so if we're running on a Saturday, on the on the Thursday morning, having a prime um, just with your breakfast. You know, sip on it like it's a cup of tea. So the thing we call out with this is most people are expecting this product, and I'm not sure how you went, Isabel, but most people are expecting this product to be the viscosity of, of a power rate or Gatorade. And, and yeah. you know, they've done an amazing job to teach us to drink really sweet sugar water. Yes. Um, it's almost a little bit like a smoothie in a way. 100%. It's a, it, it is. It's a smoothie-like texture it, it's thicker um and that's the the thickness is the resistant starch and that's i guess that's what we need to be able to have the science happen and it's got to be resistant in the stomach to get through to a large bowel so it's certainly uh, a much thicker consistency so we would always advocate for people if you ever grab it for the first time just tip it into a glass before you consume it so you can see the thickness um and in, when people do that they they see what they're going to consume so that's a good thing um, so Thursday, Friday, before you, you run on a Saturday, certainly have a prime, so you're really well hydrated. So you, I guess if you think about it from a, a carbo-loading point of view, people go and consume, you know, whatever they need to do to build their carbs. You, you sort of need to hydro-load as well. Yes, absolutely. We over-hydrate um, because we'll just excrete those those fluids, right? So, But what we can do is with the prime product is absorb fluids more efficiently in those days beforehand so that when we hit the start line, we are in a better hydrated space. And, and you know, I guess in an ultra marathon, people are probably going to lose in that exercise space. And, again, it comes down to climate and sweat rates yeah. and all those sorts of things. But on average, most people probably lose somewhere between one and a half to two and a half litres an hour. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so trying to replace one and a half to two and a half litres an hour is a really, really hard job. So it's if you're starting, possible, isn't it, really, normally? If you're starting... Um, Three to four hundred grams heavier mm. because you're better hydrated. That's got to be a good thing at the 80, 90, 100 k mark uh, when you're still going really strong. Yeah, yeah. And and to be honest, you know, standard um, hydration um, protocols 
will often have you, because you're drinking so much, up half the night going to the toilet, like you said, you get rid of it, which isn't necessarily ideal, you know, just before an ultra either. No, it's not. You're 100% right. So some of the things, some of the, well, anecdotally, uh, we've, we haven't done a sleep study, but a lot of our athletes, you know, they've got aura rings or they're, they're very, particularly in the Ironman space, they're very yes. clinical about, you know, what's going to give them the advantage. And so we hear from so many of them that when they consume this product, they sleep better because they're just better hydrated. Yeah. Um, and there's a study that was done uh, a couple of years ago in China and US. It was a 20,000 person study. And it certainly showed that the people that were better hydrated got more than eight hours of sleep a night. And those that were less hydrated or dehydrated only got five to six hours oh, of sleep. Wow. That's a huge uh, difference. Massive difference. And so, yes, the hydration part of our sleep process or how it benefits our sleep is really, really important. So, you, yeah, certainly if you're going to be up for 38 hours, uh, you want to make sure you get a good couple of nights sleep before you uh, deprive yourself for the next couple of days. Yeah, that's right. So, and, and that's the thing is it all ties in together. And and like you said, um, I mean, carbo loading is, is good and it tends to help you to hold on to a bit of fluids as well. So if you combine the two, you're really um you're really setting yourself up well. Yeah, I, look, we say it all the time here. It's about helping people get to the start line, and whether that's a start line for another training session or the start mm -hmm. line for the, the bucket list event they've been training for, if we can get them there in the best hydrated space, we know that they're going to have a better race um, or a better training session or whatever it may be. So that's what really drives us is to help people tick off more bucket list events and, and go, all right, what's next, as opposed to never again, not doing that, not putting my family through it and all those sorts of things, yeah. just, because, just because of the simple thing that they didn't consider dehydration was going to impact them as much as it did. Um, and so, yeah, that hydration space is really important and we live and breathe it and we're pretty lucky to do it with some some pretty amazing science. Yeah, look, and, and I think um, a lot of athletes, you know, um, forget a little bit, forget about hydration and, you know, the, I mean, because it's because it's something you just do, you don't really think about it. You plan your nutrition and you plan your pacing strategy and, oh, I'll just drink. Um, and I know there's a lot of talk about, oh, just drink to thirst, but I think when you're doing these really big events, it needs to be more than just drinking to thirst. Oh, 100%. And look, there's there's certainly studies out there that say that when you drink to thirst, um, you're already dehydrated because yeah. that's your mechanism to say, hey, I'm thirsty. Yeah. So once you get to that point, it's a slippery slope and it doesn't take much. So we, we recently spoke to the Victorian police around them using the product for their motorcycle force okay. um, because those guys and, and this comes back to your point you said earlier about summer and people thinking more around hydration if if you're a motorcycle police officer you've got a helmet on mm. you've got gloves on your, your natural cooling system suffocated effectively you can't cool and so that cool breeze over your arms when you run and over your legs which which is what helps keep us cool or, or control their core body temperature doesn't happen for, for those sorts of people. So they participated in a trial. Um, and the way that we got that participation to happen was we presented to them and said, at only 3% body weight or 3% dehydrated, your cognitive decision making process slows to the equivalent of being 0.05. Wow. Yeah. So if you think, so I said to the, the, the police, Force. I said, if you think about it like this, you've got someone out there pulling someone over for being 0.05, but cognitively they could be in exactly the same spot. Yes, they haven't been consuming anything, but they're dehydrated to the yeah. same point. So that's where this dehydration part is. It's 3% of our body weight, and we're, we're effectively operating at 0.05. Yeah. Um, or at 5%, at productivity in the workplace drops off by 50%. So there's so many studies that are linked back to dehydration and the impact of dehydration. But to your point a second ago, we'll go and get our pacing strategy right, we'll do our training, we'll carbo load, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll do all of the other things. And then that that last piece, which is possibly not the most important, but is equally as important, is left a chance. I think it's, it's I mean, I've learned um, through my own mistakes how, how important it is. I mean, I had to DNF um, a race in Canada because I 
I was eating, but I was forgetting to hydrate. And so I ended up with such bad gastric distress. I, I couldn't keep going. Um, mm -hmm. And and that came down purely to hydration. So, you know, it's it's massively important and I think massively neglected as well. Yeah. And the point before around summer, so yes, people are going to think more around hydration in summer. Mm. But in winter when we run, we've got our coats on, yes. we've got a bag on, we've got a scarf on. We, we and, we, and we don't feel like drinking as much in winter. It's like, oh, it's cold. I don't need to drink. But we don't. <laughs> the, dehydration, the dehydration impact in winter is mm. greater than it is in summer. The, the only difference is, is possibly not as many people run and, and participate in events and bits and pieces in winter as we do in summer. So, therefore, we don't notice it as much because there's not as many people. You don't see as many people DNF and, and those yeah. sorts of things because the participation numbers are less. But certainly the moment we put a long sleeve top on or put a buff around the neck or a beanie on a head, we are increasing our rate of dehydration significantly because of fluid yeah. loss. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I agree, I agree. But, um, yeah, it is something we forget about in winter. But I know when when you get home from a run, you're sweaty in winter too. So, yeah, absolutely. And that get home from exercise piece is really important. So what most people say to us is they'll be like, oh, how do you how do you measure the difference when you go out for a run? And and it's real life things that people will report back to us. So like be like, I wasn't grumpy or snappy with the kids. I I um I didn't have my wife or my husband badgering me to get off the couch because I felt like I had a hangover and I've been for a run as opposed to a so it's an exercise induced hangover effectively is what dehydration is. Um so people have come home and they're lying on the couch and can't do anything. It's that's how they're feeling so the fact that they're out mowing a lawn or playing with the kids or, or can get up and go to a, a family function or whatever and function as a normal human they're the real life bits of examples or anecdotal feedback we get from people who say i knew it was on point at the elite athlete level um so the elite athletes use so olympians and those sorts of things they, they just turn around and say well i can produce a drug sample that's a quality sample for a sada or water within an hour or two of finishing, as opposed to the five or six hours that sometimes it takes people to produce a sample. So from that perspective, they know they're really, really well hydrated. So Izzy Bat Doyle, who's one of our ambassadors, South Australian girl, um, ran the Melbourne Marathon. Uh, so officially ran the fastest debut marathon for an Australian female, produced a sample within 90 minutes to finish a marathon. Um, which she goes, that's unheard of. Like that. Well, doesn't... I know I used to um race mountain bikes, and we used to have to get you know drug tested, and it could be a couple of hours, and you're just sitting there, and you're not allowed to go anywhere, and yeah. So I mean, uh, the toughest job in the world. That that the scout that has to sit there with you. I mean, that. Oh my god, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, tough job. <laughs> Absolutely. Um. Yeah. So that's I guess. That's the story of Prepped and how I got involved yeah. and feel really fortunate to have some really amazing science that underpins our business. Um, yeah. And, yeah. So, um, if people uh, who are listening are interested in, in you know, giving it a try, um, where would they find your products? Yeah, fundamentally we're an e-commerce business. So preppedhydration.com.au, um, P-R-E-P-D. Um, we get a few different versions of that. So, or some people will say Prep D or uh, Prep O. Our, our <laughs> D looks like an O. Uh, some people just um, prepped with a T um, on it, but it's P R E P D, prepedhydration.com.au. Uh, and the website's got some amazing information on there as well, just around there's a dehydration calculator on there. So if you said you were going to run a marathon and you got to 2% or 3% or 5%, what would that do to your time and how much would it blow out? Um, and, and that's that hitting the wall piece that, that people talk about. So we, we certainly haven't done it for an ultra marathon because that's probably the algorithms are probably yeah. a bit harder to probably. do. Right? Yeah. But you, you'll certainly get an idea if you, you're looking to run a four hour marathon and you, your time blows out by about 35 minutes at 3% dehydration level. So, mm -hmm. and you know, that, that's a huge amount of extra time to be to exercise when you thought you were going to be finished a long time ago. So, um, yeah, there's some really good information on the website that people can absorb. 
literally and figuratively. Um, <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you for that. And and like you said, you have sachets, so people can get those as well as they want to. Yeah. Them um, and and they, so we do a sampler box, so you get so four of these, so yeah. one of each skew. Um, so for first time buyers, I'll pick those up for yeah twenty six bucks. Um, nice. And then yeah, there's sachets that come. Uh, they're we're just they're about to come back into stock. We've just been out with them. We've got rid of too many of them too quickly, but you know, that's a good problem to have. But yes, yeah, chain issues at the moment certainly are a challenge in, in many different industries, but we're certainly feeling it in ours. But fundamentally, um, yeah, people can pick them up pretty cheaply. I mean, you know, that tub there, that'll work out to about you know, $3.70 um, a serve in terms yeah. of from a recovery product or, or a prime product. So pretty yeah. cost effective. Yeah, no, that's right. Now, is there anything that I maybe didn't ask but should have or any information that you'd like to share that we haven't touched on? Uh, oh, look, mainly just that the product is based on some unbelievable science. Um, and as I said earlier, your gut health is really important. So, mm. you know, gut health, about 70% of our immune system sits in our gut. Yes. So if we've got a healthy gut, we're generally a healthy person. So... If we go back to the athletes that we that use our product regularly, they'll they'll come back and say they're, you know, since introducing prep to their to their regime, their training regime, so you know, 20 week build ups to Ironman events or the like, or Chris Murphy who runs, you know, crazy amount of miles or kilometers every year doing these backyard ultras, is that because their gut health is better, their immune health has been stronger, and so they haven't been as sick or they they don't feel like they're in that immune compromised position that they normally find themselves in. So there's I guess there's that gut health, general health well-being piece that sits within the use of the product as well. So I mean we do laugh, we do laugh that it's the ultimate lifestyle drink because it does tick off so many different verticals, but fundamentally they all fall back into hydration and gut health. And at 60% of our body being water and 70% yeah. of our immune system sitting in our gut, it's certainly they're two big pieces of the jigsaw that we need to get right for, for that bucket list event, as I said earlier, that we're trying to tick off. Yeah. No, just, just another question I thought of, would this be something that you could take every day? Yeah, we absolutely. So I drink these ones. Yeah. Not too often. No, I drink them very regularly. Um, but I would I would have a recover three or four times a week. Okay. Um, and, and particularly, so I guess that we, we didn't really touch on that cognitive distress. You that little person that sits in your head when you're running, and that's cognitive fatigue. Yeah. Um, more than and I'm telling you that you've you've gone far enough and you've worked hard enough. But you also get that at work. You know, yeah. like three o'clock in the afternoon, need a coffee. It's yeah. cognitive fatigue that kicks in. So people go and get a coffee, which dehydrates them, yeah. which you know, I do it myself. But um yeah, if you've got better hydration, you, you certainly don't have that mid-afternoon slump. Um, yeah. So we have a lot of tradies um, that use our product because, again, on the work site, we're losing, you know, up to three litres an hour a day. Like hour, three litres an hour each day um, out, you know, whether in ceiling cavities as an electrician or on top of a roof um, doing things. So certainly, you know, it does tick off a lot of aspects of just general hydration, which is really important to day-to-day -day living for us. So, Yep. It's a good everyday drink. Instead of a Powerade, you can grab one of those yes. and away you go. Oh, I think way be way tastier than a Powerade. I'm, I really don't like those kind of drinks and just the sugar levels of those uh, and the chemicals, like the colours. I've never seen anything in nature look like that. <laughs> I guess the quick thing, though, is we certainly want to make sure that for the people listening today, whilst in this ultra marathon space, we can certainly use a recover during. You still need to be getting in your water. You still need yes. to be getting in your electrolytes. You, 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 we are really bookending the event with a couple of little additions during every sort of four to six hours, depending on how long you're going to be out there on an ultra. But it's not going to replace the water. No. It's going to replace your electrolytes that you still need to consume. It's just going to allow your body to enhance those or absorb those about 40% more efficiently. Um, which makes a massive difference later on in the event. Yeah. No, 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 and I agree. But even then, even for an ultra, I wouldn't recommend things like Gatorade. I think there's way better electrolytes oh, out yeah. there than, <laughs> than that sort of stuff. But, yes, yes, 100%. You, you still need those other items. But um, like you said, if you want to be able to absorb all the water and the electrolytes that you're consuming, um, this will really help with that. And um, I think, um, like like I said, it's, it's an area many runners forget about simply because it's just something we do, like breathing. 
Um, yeah. And so you don't really think about it, but I certainly think it is something, um, you know, when we're looking at, we're always looking at ways of improving. This is just an easy way to to improve without putting in like extra training or anything like that. So, you know. I've, um, so we had a contact with a, a World Tour UCI cycling team. Um, so he's a coach. And so he gave, they were on a training camp in Spain. And so he gave half the riders the prep product and the other half didn't have it. And this was on a, a pretty big threshold day. There were lots of climbing. Um, and one of the riders got to the end of the day, knew that, obviously knew that he had the product. And he just said to the coach, he said, I don't know what you call that stuff, but it's got to be like modern day EPO that's legal because I feel amazing. And, and oh, wow. Power and watts and I guess that perceived rate of exertion, yeah. even though they're working harder, their perceived rate of exertion was down. And that, again, just comes back to that cognitive distress that we talk about, that little person inside our head that says you've gone too hard, too hard or too far or it's time to stop or whatever it is. That Yeah, that's a cognitive fatigue. So, yeah, it just comes back to hydration. But we, So we've certainly across the years had many, many unbelievable stories from different athletes that have used this. But, yes, we certainly are fully legal. We're batch tested from Hasta and all those sorts of things. But when you've got some of the best cyclists in the world saying, well, this must be like blood doping because that's how good I feel at the end of the day, um, that's got to be a good thing. That's awesome. All right. Well, on that note, um, thank you very much for coming on the podcast and um, sharing this great product with us. Israel, lovely to be here. Thanks very much for your time and thanks for having me on as a guest. No worries. I'll put uh, links to the website and, and all the good stuff um, in the show notes. Thank you. All right. Thanks for that. Bye.